In terms of storage's impact on gaming performance, going from an old hard drive like this one to an SSD like this gives you some fat reductions in load times. But these days, even one of these SATA SSDs is a pretty sad, lowly, pathetic, loser little storage configuration. In 2024, storage like this beast Lexar drive that has speeds measured in the kind of number an anime protagonist would shout at their enemies is relatively accessible, <laughs> for now. But to what extent do our game loading times benefit from that accessibility? Well, I guess we'll find out today. In terms of storage, we're going to slowly work our way up the drive totem in today's video, starting with hard drives at the bottom, some SATA SSD action, a common garden NVMe thrown in there as well before we get to the big daddy NVMe Lexar drive. And I'm also going to throw in some external SSD caddies for that high-end NVMe drive, which I get comments about a lot, and it's honestly one of the main reasons I'm doing this video. Now on paper, there is a huge amount separating these drives. The hard drive that I'm using for this test measures reads and writes about 130 megabytes per second, all the way up to the Lexar drive that hovers around 7,000, which is more than 50 times as fast. So I'm curious to see how much that translates into real world performance. And then finally, before we get into the tests, the test system I'm using is the ep Nematron back here. I just wanted to give the drives the maximum headroom possible. In terms of CPU, I've got a 13900KF, we've got an RTX 4090 in here, and 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 6000 megahertz. But with that, let's connect our hard drive and do some waiting. So let's see how long The Last of Us takes to launch off a mechanical drive. 3, 2, 1, start. Stop. Okay, about 28 seconds, that's not too bad. In terms of graphics, I'm gonna use an ultra preset at 1440p for whatever that's worth. Uh, so with that, let's see how long it takes the old timer to load into the game world. Three, two, one, start. Whoa, two and a half minutes. This is clearly the storage configuration for you if you get some kind of sick pleasure of making strangers wait for you to load into online lobbies. And I'm also going to do a benchmark run to see if it impacts our in-game performance. I'm pretty sure it won't, considering that the loading is the game going from the SSD to the RAM, I think. Um, but we'll do it, we'll do it just in case. Oh damn, the 4090 does really clap the cheeks of this game at 1440p Ultra. We're getting well over 120 frames per second, even though it did just dip below that once I mentioned it. Uh, but this is buttery smoothness. I then moved over to Forza Horizon 5 to see how the Hedda de handled a massive open world game. Three, two, one, start. Whoa, just shy of two minutes, which is actually faster than The Last of Us, weirdly, but that's so long. Next, I swapped the old hard drive out for a SATA SSD, long understood as the sweet spot for game load times. Three, two, one, start. Ooh, look at you, Mr. Speedy Gonzalez. That's fast. Three, two, one, start. Whoa, it took less than a tenth as long? Damn, you really shouldn't be messing with hard drives anymore. <laughs> That's outrageous. Now, not that I was expecting to, but in terms of gaming performance, once we've loaded in, it's exactly the same. Which, <laughs> why wouldn't it be? But, but still, let's see if Forza benefits as massively. Well, I mean, this time, it's not quite a tenth of this speed, so, you know, that's a win for the hard drive, I guess? Next, I'm gonna drop this Common Garden PCIe Gen 3 Samsung NVMe drive, that's a real mouthful, into the M.2 slot on the motherboard here, and see if we get any additional gains on top of what we got from the SSD. 
I'm kind of thinking it's going to be the same, but we'll see. Three, two, one, start. Ooh, half a second faster launch time. NVMe, you spoil us. Although when it comes to game load times, we did get a pretty big reduction in load time. But again, if you have a SATA drive, it's not like 22 seconds is an entire lifetime. But you know, faster is always better. And then of course, in terms of frame rate, margin of error type stuff going on here. And then when it comes to Forza's load times on the normal NVMe, okay, not as big an improvement as The Last of Us, but it's something. Next, we're gonna try the big boy Lexar drive, which is currently hiding under the 4090, and it also has the Windows install on it, which I don't think is a problem. A few moments later. Wait a second, why is the super fast NVMe slower than the slower one? Is it because of the Windows install? Oh, and the other disadvantage the super fast NVMe drive has is that it was right under the 4090, which was just dumping a bunch of heat onto it. Like, it's kind of hot to the touch. Okay, so it's been a while, and now we have a fresh Windows install on an impartial third party, and the Lexar drive in the same slot we had the slower NVMe in before. So hopefully this time it's at least the same speed as that other drive. Wait, the retests on both the results are identical. That is kind of weird. Being very confused as to why the two results aren't at least the same, I went out and bought another super fast NVMe drive to see what it does. Okay, so the WD drive loads faster than that normal Samsung NVMe, which means I, I don't know what's wrong with that Lexar drive, but there does seem to be some benefit going from normal NVMe to super NVMe. 12.63 seconds, wow, so Forza also likes the crazy speed of that WD drive. So now that we've established that there is some benefit going to one of these super fast NVMe drives, let's drop it in an external USB caddy and see how much damage that does to its brittle little knees. Now the caddy in question is this Silverstone MS-12, which as far as I understand it is at least a medium beast. Now I'm going to start off by plugging it into the fastest square USB port on the motherboard. Two, one, start. Stop. Whoa. That gave us the second slowest result behind only the mechanical drive and not even by that much. I then tried three different square USB to USB-C cables, which all gave that same result. But then I decided to try USB-C to C. Two, one, go. Oh, okay, that's way better. Now it's similar to the standard NVMe drive, which makes sense considering that I think this dock is just PCIe Gen 3 as opposed to the Gen 4 of the drive we've plugged into it. So the moral of the story is don't use hard drives or a square USB because life's too short, and going to super fast NVMe drives actually kinda helps, depending on the drive. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, bye.